All right, I think we're I think we're live. Okay. Yes, sir, we are live. All right, welcome back, everybody. Today's the twenty seventh consecutive. We do it every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. But the twenty seventh luxury lunch and learn. We launched this on April tenth due to COVID nineteen, trying to bring value to the marketplace, uh, helping educate both agents, broker owners, team leaders, as well as we have some people watching these that are non-real estate agents. So uh, excited to have Alvin Newton on today. And before I introduce Alvin, uh, this is gonna be our, our last luxury lunch and learn, not ever, but for a few weeks, uh, we're, uh, we're heading out west. We're doing, we rented a sprinter van. We're going through the Badlands and uh, Yellowstone and uh, Mount Rushmore doing all that stuff. We figured with the camps being closed and schools uh, with, uh, you know, with COVID-19 as well as the public pools. So we're doing that. I'm, I'm heading out of town here in a couple days. So this is our 27th live and then we'll reconvene at the end of the month. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, you can check it out at luxurylunchandlearn.com. You'll see the next episodes and the dates. Uh, so if you go there periodically, check in or just uh, shoot us a note. We'll let you know. Uh, we have uh, CEO of Century 21 lined up. I think that's July 1st. Um, and uh, with some other folks looking forward to uh, making those announcements shortly. So let's get back at the uh, at today's episode. You know, from time to time, we have various uh, perspectives and various guests on. Uh, sometimes they're CEOs, sometimes they're luxury based, sometimes they're not luxury based. We've had people on from real estate boards to MLSs to uh, associations. And I'm a huge proponent for agents and brokers looking to differentiate themselves from the competition. I think one of the lowest hanging fruits to do that is through print marketing, through uh, lead generation and prospecting through print marketing. You know, there's a huge push through digital, 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 online, online, online. And uh, when everybody's going left, I recommend go right. That's one way to stand above the competition. And so that's why I have today's guest on uh, with Real Marketing. I have Al, Alvin, Al Newton here, who's with uh, Real Marketing. I first met these guys. Uh, through a Remax event, uh, we launched our designation four years ago to Remax DFW, Mark Wolf, and uh, a little over four years ago now. And I met these guys in real marketing through them and was very impressed. They did the actual uh, luxury magazine for Remax called uh, uh, Collections, the Collections Magazine, and they do other things. But uh, without further ado, welcome, Al. Thank you so much, Michael. Excited to be here. Excited to um, talk about this topic as well. Um, like you said, you know, everybody is, uh, for whatever reason, seems to be focusing a lot on digital and a lot of people forgot about direct mail. So I'm glad that we're here going to talk about this subject. Yeah, for sure. So, um, you know, direct mail, you know, many agents during COVID-19 or the, the recession 2008, many agents pull back on their outward expenses and it's okay to look deep and see, Hey, what can I cut back and what can I put more into? But one of the things that I still find value in is, is print marketing and digital, you know, digital is one thing, but print marketing, you know, when I pick the mail up every day and I usually do, you know, there's less mail, there's less advertisements out there. So would, you know, back, you know, when there would be credit cards sent to you every day in the early 2000s and there's 50 things in mail every day, now there might be five or seven. And so there's less competition or less noise out there. And one of the things I tell agents too, Alvin, is, you know, with canceled or expired or for sale by owners, or if you're doing some prospecting or what we call farming in neighborhoods, there's just a lot of, um, boring marketing materials out there. So you guys have high class, high print stuff. We'll talk about that a little bit, but tell us a little bit about your philosophy and, and your niche as far as um, print marketing and why an agent should consider, um, you know, print when it comes to prospecting, lead generation or farming versus digital. Sure. And um, I'd like to also especially touch on, you know, with this, co with the COVID-19 epidemic and kind of what we've seen as a company and what happened. Yeah, please. And, uh, you know, w one of the things that we've seen within, you know, once um, everything got shut down towards the end of March, we did get a lot of agents who, you know, were scared. They didn't really know what was going to happen or what the future looked like. So, you know, we did get a lot of agents who were calling the company and, you know, they wanted to put their marketing on hold. Some of them did. 
Um, but on the flip side, I have to say I had a, quite a few agents whose mindset was, I want to take advantage of this market right now because when this market when this market shifts, I'm going to be the only one that's going to be marketing. And when somebody's ready to sell a home, they're going to call me. So, you know, for example, I, I had a gentleman in um, Colorado, Denver, Colorado, with Remax uh, Professionals. He literally called me like the third week after the shutdown, and he said, "Okay, I'm ready." And I'm thinking, okay, great. He's going to sign up for four or 500 homes. He literally signed up for 3,100 homes while everybody else was going, Hey, I need to quit my marketing. His mindset was, no, I need to ramp my marketing up because I know that all these other agents are going to stop their marketing. So uh -huh. when that homeowner is ready to sell, they're going to call me. And you know, as what we've seen happen was, is a lot of those sellers at that time, you know, their mindset is, yes, we want to sell our home, but because of COVID, they all backed off. Yeah. But that doesn't mean four or five months down the road, all of a sudden, they're still not going to want to sell their home. Yeah. So those people are still going to want to sell their home on top of all the other people that, um, you know, are just thinking, hey, we want to sell our home. So that's a good point. You know, I tell, I, I did a, a video on this particular topic uh, because I have a, an older client, she's about 80 years old, she's a widow, and she was interviewing me, interviewing another agent, and this is, you know, we're talking March now, and uh, the other agent was saying, wait till COVID-19 to sell. Um, again, she was comfortable selling during COVID-19, you know, because there's precautions in place with gloves and masks and, yeah. and, and, and disclosures, um, so we weren't you know, we want to make sure she was comfortable first and foremost, but I told her you got a 50% chance of selling if we put it on the market and you got a 0% chance if you don't put it on the market. So yeah. we did put it on a house, a couple, couple doors down, also put theirs on and uh, we put ours under contract before for those. And, um, you know, we're going to be closing here in a couple weeks, but, um, I, you know, I'm a big proponent of, you know, you got a shot to sell if it's listed and you don't, if it doesn't. So uh, you mentioned, um, you know, homes. So in this particular market, uh, your company does uh, fill in the blanks if I'm, I'm missing something, but you sure. do the traditional just listed, just sold postcard. So as an agent, when you put a home on the market, uh, you know, you can identify a radius or a number of homes to, to send out a just listed postcard or just sold. Uh, and, but you also, you're talking about 3,100 homes or approximate. Um, you also do some uh, market updates, so to speak. So, Correct. you know, if, a, if an agent wants to consistently send mailers to a particular neighborhood or, or you know, X amount of homes um, in a particular area, um, you guys have some really nice, high quality print marketing with some amazing analytics. It's, it's, it's not just the you know, boring flyer, there's some good value there. Talk to me a little bit about that, if you would. Yeah, and you know what, I, I will answer your first question as well. Um, okay, please. Our, our, our philosophy, as far as direct mail goes, is that, you know, in today's world, you know, every, again, everybody wants to focus on social media, which is great because we, we firmly believe that you have to be there, right? You need to have a presence on social media, um, you know, websites, things of that nature. But uh, the one thing that, I don't think a lot of agents really understand is that when you are posting, for example, a just listed or just sold post on your Facebook page, how many people are actually really even seeing that, right? You know, because out of the 400 friends that you have on your Facebook business page, I can almost guarantee you 300 of them are other real estate agents and title reps, right? And out of all those people, 5% of those people are probably going to see that post. So Whenever you're posting on social media, um, I mean, we see so many different ads on a daily basis that we just kind of we just kind of uh, thumb through them, right? We just look at them really quick, move on to the next thing. So our philosophy is with direct mail: when you get that piece in the mail, mm -hmm. it's something that's tangible, something that you can hold on to, that you can look at over and over again, and it also has a lot of shelf life as well, right? So that's kind of David uh, Collins' philosophy, our owner. He's been doing this for over 25 years now. And um, one of the things that I really like about working for this company, I've been here nine years, is that we don't change. I mean, nothing we do changes. I mean, it's direct mail. The only thing that changes is, is the quality of our products and services just keep getting even better and better. So, um, 
Yeah. So yeah, what was the other? What was the last part of your question? I apologize. I yeah. Guess. No. So the, the, the so the first part um, was just list it just sold. The second part right. was right. you know when you identify in this example the, the gentleman that was increasing the number of yeah. homes he he touched and so I, I talked about like. Uh, what that product looks like, right? So it's market update driven, what's listed, what's sold, um, what else is in those? Yeah, so so here's the thing with just listed and just sold. Sure, sure, we believe in, you know, doing the just listed, just sold postcards. Of course, we change the verbiage a little bit on those because everybody says just listed, just sold. So we do change that verbiage up so it's a little bit more attractive. But one of the things that uh, we highly recommend to our clients is first and foremost, if an agent does anything at all, especially in the luxury, right? If they do anything at all, they're going to do a just listed or just sold postcard. However, our recommendation is you should step up, step up to the plate and do a four page property brochure of the home you just took the listing on yeah. and mail that into the farm, yeah. right? Or mail that to, to, to the list of people you want to mail it to. Same thing with the just sold, because the whole idea with direct mail isn't to necessarily get you a buyer. It's to show a potential seller how you would market their home if they were to list with you. Listings are king, and that's what we're all about. We're all about helping you get more listings. Yeah, yeah, and that's you know for those that are that are watching, you know, Florida International did a study. It was probably 20 years ago now, but I venture to say the statistics haven't changed that much. And they looked at three demographics of real estate agents: the real estate agent that focused only with buyers, the real estate agent that worked with both buyers and sellers and the real estate agent that only worked with, with sellers. And the agents that focused only on sellers or listings is the term in the industry, as you know, um, made a whopping 81% more than the next category. So again, depending on uh, markets and price points, you know, that, that changes. But, but for the most part, uh, when you get listings, you get inquiries, right? And yeah. Right. And, and, you know, with our, what Michael had mentioned earlier, our market report. So one of the things that our company is very well known for, um, you know, across the U S Canada is our market report. And it's, it's basically, it's a farming piece. It's a four page market report that gets mailed into a specific neighborhood every single month that brands you as a neighborhood expert. And as Michael had mentioned, one of the things that we do as a company is we actually, we can go into the farm area for you that you're interested in. We can pull the stats. We can make sure that it's a good area for you to be farming to. So in other words, you know, we want to make sure that there's really no dominant agent already dominating the farm. We also want to make sure that it has decent turnover in that area. And every single month, our designers go in and update the data on that specific farm. They update the active penny that sold data. Um, they update the Google map, which shows the little pins where the homes are active pending and sold. Okay. And you approve it. Once you approve it, it's printed and mailed um, into the neighborhood. So it's almost like a set it and forget it type thing, but it's designed to get you listings, point blank. That's, that's good to know. So uh, you mentioned print collateral sometimes doesn't necessarily get the home sold, but it helps differentiate yourself with prospective clients. Yeah. Uh, talk, talk to me a little bit about that if you yeah, so um, one of the things that we know is agents who are farming a neighborhood already, right? So they're, 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 they've been sending mailings into the farm for the last maybe three to six months. Now, all of a sudden, they get a listing in that farm. So what we recommend they do, again, is do a four-page or a trifold property brochure and now mail that into the farm because the market update shows the seller or the homeowner that you are the neighborhood expert. Uh -huh. The property brochure is going to now show that potential seller how you would market their home if they were to list with you. It's huge, right? And so, you know, if, if an agent's going to do an open house in the farm, um, they should definitely do high quality property brochures as well. Because typically what happens is that, you know, if you have 20 people show up to your open house, pretty much seven to 10 of those people are going to live in the neighborhood and they're a potential seller thinking about selling. So the better quality material you have at that open house, it's also going to reflect on how you would market, you know, their home if they were to list with you. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, you know, it's kind of what we focus on with our, with our agents. And what, what are you telling agents? I know market by market, it probably varies, but you know, it's, it's a, probably not a cheap investment. So what are you telling them before they're going to see any traction before they're going to get a return on that investment? As far as if I identify, a, a farm, right? You know, yeah. in real estate, the farm is a, a given market. Uh, 
uh, you know, neighborhood? Say there's that's a, no, that's a great question. Um, I mean, of course, we get asked that all the time because farming isn't cheap by any means. I mean, it definitely has has a price tag. But you know, one of the things that that we tell all of our agents is, you know, it's not really so much about how much it costs you each month. It's about the return on your investment. Sure. And that's why we do pull the data. We do want to make sure that our agents are in a farm that has potential because obviously we can't guarantee anything, but what we know as a company, um, th this is actually a really good stat. We pulled this a couple of years ago, so it is a couple of years old, but it's still, it still kind of holds its place. We looked at all of the agents who signed up with us um, three years ago, all right, that are doing over 900 homes a month in a farm, and they're mailing to that farm every month, not missing a month. 72% of those agents are still with us today. And by year three, those agents have between 20 and 30% market share of their community. So one of the things that I explain to my clients are this is not a magic bullet. It's not a quick fix. If you're going to pick the farm, you need to be committed to the farm for the rest of your real estate career, whether you're with us or not. Because if you're not going to commit to the farm, you really shouldn't even be farming, right? And Within the first year, on average, we can say that most of our agents will make their money back. They'll basically double their investment. They'll make their money back. I mean, that's what we typically see in the first year. But by the third year, like I said, if they're doing over eight, 900 homes a month, they will have 20 to 30% market share of their community by year three. Well, that's good to know. And, you know, you mentioned uh, there, there's, there's, there's no easy button. I have the easy no. button in front of me right now because, you know, real estate agents, you know, business owners, entrepreneurs, you know, some of the terms we're hearing through COVID-19, those brokers, those teams that are going to come out even stronger, you know, you hear the word perseverance or grit. Um, yeah. Know, in, in your in your opinion, those teams, those broker owners that are going to be successful post-COVID-19 are those that are going to have blank in common. What, 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 what do you think? Yeah, so I think that... I think that those offices, teams, brokers that are going to have similarities in common are going to be, they're, they're going to be the offices that did take advantage of what's happening right now in the COVID-19 market. And that, that, that's ramping up their marketing. Um, I actually wrote this one down. So, um, so basically they either started marketing now, right? So they either started marketing right now to take advantage of it or their current clients that continued marketing. And what they will have in common post-COVID is that they'll be the ones getting all of the business because all of the other agents um, had stopped marketing during during this time. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm seeing. Yeah, that's a great point. So, so my recommendation for agents that are watching this or watching the replay or streaming is, you know, if you have a success, if you have a unique story during COVID-19, uh, maybe someone that was on the fence of selling, but they decided to or you have a closing and you want to talk about the remote closings or the, the touchless transactions that you're going through, um, document that, talk about that. You know, we just put a property on that's over $5 million and we put it under contract in two weeks. And, and, and that was during the pandemic. So, so these are all situations where you as an agent think about an opportunity to bring value, to educate um, and, and you should probably do so in a social media platform and a, a video platform and then a print platform. So if you have a firm, if you have a neighborhood, um, you know, let them know, right. Um, and be consistent in front of them. Yeah. One of the things too, that, um, I was looking at your questions and one of the things that, um, I, I did want to point out is very interesting is that I know that the virtual tours have become very popular right now, the virtual tours, the virtual open houses, yep. um, which I think are a great idea. Um, however, you know, my mind and David's mind is always, you know, let's think outside the box on this. So, you know, these agents that are doing virtual tours right now, it's kind of, you know, everybody's doing virtual tours, everybody's doing virtual open houses. Mm -hmm. So now that, you know, you can actually hold an open house or let's just go back to the virtual tour, all right? So, to be different, and it's about thinking outside of the box and being different than everybody else. So, okay, great, you're gonna have a virtual tour, you're gonna have a virtual open house. One of the things that you should do, again, you should do a four-page property brochure on that new listing you have. 
you should mail that into or around the neighborhood, inviting the homeowners that live in that community to your virtual open house, to your virtual tour. Because again, it's thinking outside the box. It's showing that you're different than every other agent. And it's also showing those potential sellers how you would market their home in this environment we're in right now to list and sell their home. It's just being different. Yes, it's going to cost you a little bit more money to do it. But I mean, I, I mean, I feel, I'm a firm believer that most agents are here to get more listings. And that's a great way to do it. Yeah, that's a great point. That's a great yeah. point. Um, so t tell us a little bit about um, real marketing. If somebody wants to find out more about some of the services that you guys offer uh, for agents, broker owners, team leaders, um, should they just go to the website, realmarketing.com? Yeah, they could go. It's actually real marketing, the number four, you.com. So real marketing for you.com. Um, real marketing for you.com. Perfect. Correct. That's, yeah. that's our main website. So they okay. could definitely go there. They could always reach out to me directly as well. Um, completely fine. Um, like I said, I've been here nine years. I pretty much know our products inside and out. Sometimes I do get thrown off by some questions, but sure. Sure. Um, yeah, but I know them pretty much inside and out. And, and Al, um, if yeah. somebody wants to reach out to you directly, what's what's the best way they should do that? I mean, they could call my cell phone. That's that. That's the best. Um, okay. Eight eight five eight two three zero twenty three seventy three. Perfect. Uh, let me. I'm going to put this in the chat as we're talking. Eight five eight two three zero twenty three seventy three. And right. I also have I also have a website too. It's uh, it's Alvin dot my rem portal dot com and it basically just takes them to a site they can fill out a form as well if they feel more comfortable doing that all right perfect perfect yeah we put the website up there as well um so that's awesome um uh, all right so one, cool. of, so, so one of the things that I, I did just want to show you one thing really quick so yes please this, this is definitely um thinking outside of the box. And this would be more for, obviously this is a luxury lunch and learn. So if you're a luxury agent and you have a nice new listing in your, in your town or your city where, I mean, price points are different, right? I live in San Diego, California. So where I live, the average sell price is 1.1 million. So that's not even luxury. So I, I get that luxury falls in the different price points. But one of the things that you should hands down be doing to be different than anybody else is when you do a property brochure for your luxury listing, yeah, you should be doing a property brochure like this. Yeah, let me see it. Yeah, so nice. this, is, this is just a huge property brochure. So, you know, you get, again, this is thinking outside the box, you guys being different. You get five of these large ones and you get 50 of the smaller ones, right? Again, it's just being different. I mean, you know, everybody does a four page property brochure if they have a nice listing. Why not do a 16 or 20 page property brochure on your luxury listing, right? Mm -hmm. So again, that's what we're about. That's what makes us different than any other marketing company out there. We're always trying to come up with different sizes, um, just, just to give you guys different value. To, yeah. to, show, to, to, to basically Let's see that show again. You. Hold, that, hold that big one up again. Yeah. I, I'm all about be different. Jack Trout yeah, said be different and charge less. Check this oh, out, right? So this, beautiful. you know, this would go... Like if you got five of these, you would put one on the kitchen countertop, for example. Yeah. Um, here's another thing to really think about. When the seller sells their home, they're going to want to keep this. Yeah. When the buyer sells or when the buyer buys the home, they're going to want to keep the property brochure of their new home. So what do you think is going to happen seven years from now when they're ready to sell their home and they pull this out of the closet? Who are they going to call? Yeah. Right. So again, it's just thinking outside of the box. And then, you have two other you have two extra ones to take with you as a listing tool on your next you know luxury listing appointment. Mm -hmm. Great, great, I, I love it. Um, you know, I tell I teach all I teach agents all the time. You know, if they have an appointment on Friday, what are you going to do to get that seller pre-sold on you before your appointment? You know, and then when you show up for the appointment, what are you going to do to differentiate yourself? So, you know, there's 1.4 million real estate realtors out there, plus even more if you count, you know, people that aren't agents that are not members of National Association yeah. of Realtors. So it's like, what are you doing to stand above the competition and be memorable? So uh, really, really good stuff. Uh, let me check for see if there's any questions. Sure. And if not... Um, then I'll make sure that your contact information is displayed throughout. Um, question, question, question. 
no questions as of now. Uh, so again, we put your email address um, in, or actually I put your phone number in there, and we also put um, your website on there. So if people have questions during the replay or uh, when we put it on our YouTube channel, they can certainly do that. So print marketing, guys, it's not going away. It's not a fad. Again, I'm a big believer that when everybody goes away from it, that's a time that you should go to, towards towards something because it's easier to stand above the competition. It's an investment. So you're looking for a return on your investment and your return on impression. And again, in this digital world, I do think print marketing you know, is the way to go. Um, and so that's why we had Al on today from Real Marketing. So realmarketingforyou.com, Real Marketing For You. Um, any other uh, things that you want to say? Um, I mean, the only other thing that I could say is, you know, for, for the agents who are just looking for a complete marketing package, again, I know we talked a lot about farming, we talked a lot about just listed, just sold postcards and property yeah. pictures, which we do all that. But we also can put together a really nice marketing package for you to, to, to market yourself, you know, like we do pre listing books, for example. So the pre listing book would be a nice book that you could drop off a day or so before you actually go on your listing appointment. So the homeowner can find out more about you, about the company you work for. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, we have, we actually do a digital pre-listing book as well. So we, again, we offer a large variety of marketing materials, um, you know, one-off packages, so to speak, that we could also do for the okay. agents. That's good to know. So agents, I, I'm actually coaching an agent out of the East coast right now. And, um, you know, he, he was asking me for our listing presentation. And uh, the one thing I'll tell agents is you got to really build rapport and you got to be in the moment, right? Theodore Roosevelt once says, nobody cares how much you know until they know you care. Daniel Kamen, Nobel Peace Prize winner, said something that was, you know, said basically people would rather do business with someone they like and they trust rather, rather than someone they don't even if that likable person is offering a lower quality product and service at a higher price. So basically, you know, you, people would rather do business with someone they like, even if they're not the, the best at what they do versus somebody that's amazing and is a jerk. So keep that in mind. You'll attract more people with honey. And um, Alvin, I really appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. I appreciate being here, Michael. And yeah. uh, have fun on that road trip, man. Come oh, on. yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna, have to, okay. I'm going to have some fun. I'm going to, uh, yeah. so guys, just a reminder, this will be on a replay on our YouTube channel, Marketing Luxury Group, or a free Facebook group, Luxury Listing Specialists, our Facebook group. If you have any questions, shoot us a note, and uh, we're going to be reconvening here in a couple weeks. Until till then, uh, let us know if you have any questions. Keep raising the bar and prove others wrong. Michael Lafito, have a great uh, rest of your day. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Peace. Thanks. All right, bye-bye.